from the church. There we go. For some reason, that thing always wants to go on mute. And if you were here for the first service, I have learned what you should learn is that this house is full of grace as my sermon went flying all over the floor. <laughs> and I was corrected on two things, which I hope to correct this time around. But there's still a discrepancy on how far it is from my house to here. <laughs> so my wife and I, Pat, if you don't know her, we've had this discussion recently about how, how long we have been here. And it's been a little over a year. And we, when we first decided to uh, come here, we knew that this sanctuary and this church would be open to receive us. And that the word of God would be accessible. It takes about 43 minutes <laughs> to drive 29.5 miles from Pond Bank over the mount to this valley. And I can tell you that the view from the top of the mountain, or in this part of the world, it's actually a hill, that the site is actually wonderfully beautiful, but not today. It was foggy on top of the mountain. We listened to Christian radio on our way here, and we do not need GPS. So the road is easily marked. Somebody said yesterday, the pastor from Shiptonsburg, about how hard it is to get here. We do not go over the river and through the woods. Today, you'll hear a story about an Ethiopian eunuch who traveled about a thousand miles on a desert road to Jerusalem to listen to the word of God in the temple. But what we know is that he was probably denied entrance into the temple because of religious, cultural issues. He was differently, physically blemished as a Gentile, black man, who had yet not converted to Christ. But on his return home, he meets a man, a man named Philip, who through the guidance of the Holy Spirit is eager, he's joyful to join with what God is going to tell this stranger about Jesus Christ, about a hope of an everlasting future in God's house. And as disciples and children of God, we are called to participate in God's mission. And it is through the voice of the Holy Spirit that will make a difference in adjusting our attitude when we sit down with those who will soon be here or for those that we meet along the road. Would you be with me in a time of prayer? So most gracious and loving Father, Rain down your spirit upon us today. Open our hearts and our minds to the mission you desire of us to follow. And help us, O oh Lord, to look past the things we see with our eyes. And help us to discern the things of the heart as we seek to minister to those we have not yet met. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing you give us each and every day. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Now, there was a recent posting on Facebook dated April 13th, 2017. I believe it showed up on our Facebook page posted by somebody else. It was written by a girl named Carly Foster. And in her writing was a self-testimony about her decision to attend a women's Bible study on Visitor Day. She knew no one. 
She went dressed in her normal clothes, jeans with slits and holes in them. And an elderly woman approached her and said to her, I do not agree with your jeans, nor with people who come to church other than in their best clothes, nor did she agree with pastors who preach with their shirts untucked because they were disrespecting God. Now, at the time of writing this sermon, it was during Holy Week, and I thought it was appropriate, and even now, continuing past Easter, there is one small group discussing on how to pursue holiness through engaging the culture. Now, I am not a fan of what's happening in today's culture. However, in the days of my youth, People weren't happy with my culture and the way I dressed or the way I acted. But what if someone showed up here next week or even today, and I apologize, not from this area or country or different ethnicity or dress or color, but regardless, traveling through in search of having the scriptures open to them. Someone might be quick to judge or ridicule, but what if we were courageous enough to love them just as they are? And as we will learn from Luke, the Apostle Paul gives us great insight to greeting people and adjusting our attitudes to be successful. In past weeks, we have been given the challenge to make room and wait for those who are not here yet. And if you were not part of that service, the challenge by Pastor Megan has been to move from where we are sitting and maybe in the back rows so that others entering our sanctuary will have a place to sit. I think that's wonderful. But in that challenge, we as disciples of Jesus Christ must remain open to how God's Spirit will lead us in the broader context of ministry as we meet those not only in here inside of these four walls, but also outside of these walls. Now, as we read in this chapter of Acts, chapter 8, Philip was so in touch with the Holy Spirit that he was not only flexible as how to use the Spirit and how the Spirit would lead, but how he would actually talk to him. I know that it's easy to become discouraged as we move from our usual places of comfort to one of unfamiliarity. But what we should really think about is those who will come and enter this holy temple searching to discover what the gospel is all about and the possibility to opening their hearts to the knowledge of Christ. Yes, God's target is spreading the gospel to all the world, but we should really embrace those opportunities. But in this little valley Do you realize we're part of the world? Even in this little valley, we are part of the world. In the story of the Ethiopian eunuch, this man had a desire in his heart to seek God. He traveled a great distance, probably a thousand mile journey, going out of his way to find God. He didn't have GPS. The road was not clearly marked. And because of his status, a Gentile from Africa, he was probably not allowed to enter the temple in Jerusalem to receive the word of God. But you see, God has prepared the gospel for all peoples, and as disciples, we must be ready to share it with those who have been made by God's Spirit without partiality, 
of injustice or unfairness. Now, in the recent discussions of our church and what it looks like to be a disciple, and quite frankly, as an evangelist of the good news, the initial circumstance appears to be in the disconnect of where to start when people we do not know come into our midst and possibly dress differently than what we might be familiar to see. Now, being a disciple, an evangelist of the gospel, comes by being a laborer in the field to bear fruit. And the author, Luke, provides an image of what happens when the power of the Holy Spirit influences our attitudes and helps us to choose his will. Now follow along as I read from these words from Acts 8, 26 through 35. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road. You know, the one that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out. And on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Kandaki. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The Spirit told Philip, go up to the chariot stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot, and he heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before it, its shear is silent. So he did not open his mouth. And in his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is this prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Now notice in verse 29 that the eunuch was sitting in his chariot reading a passage or from a scroll of Scripture from Isaiah, which is in Isaiah 53, 7, 8. And the Spirit tells Philip, to go up and stay near it. Now imagine someone you have never met before, a foreigner or an outsider who walks into the space and he sits down in the back pew that has been prepared to receive someone new. Just as God was moving to prepare the eunuch to believe, we are sensitive to the spirit to plant the seed of the living God to come near. And sit with them. Are we ready to do that? If you are not a native of Path Valley or the surrounding area, anybody not a native of Path Valley? Woo! Then more than likely you're considered an outsider or a foreigner. (laughs) Is that true? I see the waving up there on the top one. We have foreigners from all over the places like Rock Hill Furnace, Doylesburg, Willow Hill, Blairs Mill, Mannheim, Orbizonia, Fort Loudon, Carlisle, Shippensburg, Chambersburg, Pond Bank. Am I missing something? Fayetteville? Scotland? Shade Gap? But what if someone came in here from an unfamiliar place that we didn't recognize, they weren't Caucasian, 
They were speaking a different language. They were dressed differently. In today's world, a thousand mile journey is nothing compared to the track of the eunuch. And we have learned that people travel from reaches to this specific destination, especially when the annual turkey supper comes around. I was corrected on dinner before. It's supper. (laughs) Thank you for the grace. (laughs) I'll tell you about that later. (laughs) Now, whether we realize it or not, God cannot wait to see what will happen when we are excited to run as Philip did to witness at just that right moment in a time of need. This does not mean that when someone new enters the door of the church that we pounce on them, but that we draw near and quietly listen for the Holy Spirit to meet them on their terms. Even though this is our turf, we meet them on God's terms, on their terms. Remember that the eunuch invited Philip to sit with him after that initial greeting. But it was the Holy Spirit who prompted Philip to run up to the carriage. But how are we to know what to do if we do not listen for and then follow the Spirit to draw near? And wait for that right opportunity to initiate a conversation. Now we have to observe that the compulsion upon Philip was unmistakable and that Philip had an utter lack of prejudice. The eunuch was an Ethiopian and in the salvation plan of God's sovereignty, God sends an angel. Not the angel, but an angel to tell Philip to go to a particular place. God arranged for Philip and this man's path to cross at that right moment. Our job is not to question the Lord, but to be obedient. And at this moment, Philip had that opportunity to witness for Christ. Had Philip waited for the eunuch to ask him a question, he may have never had the chance to testify. And in all of our witnessing experiences, we should always seek to take the initiative to open the door for the gospel. So often, I find that there is a misconception about what the role of a disciple is and what to do when we feel that the moment of preparation has finally arrived for us to share the good news of Christ. Now, if we look closely at this story, Philip was excited when the Spirit prompted him. And in verse 8, 27, it says, and he rose and he went. He didn't wet, wait. It says that he rose and went. Brothers and sisters, if you are excited about the gospel message of Jesus Christ, then the Spirit will guide you and steer you in that conversation of who Jesus is. The same Holy Spirit who used Philip will use you too. Now, I sense there are questions about who this Philip is. Well, Philip's role was that of a deacon and a teacher, and Philip actually played a crucial role in evangelizing in Samaria. But even if you consider yourself neither, you have a role in praying for the salvation of the lost and those who are considered outsiders. You have a role. It's God's mission to us. God cannot use those who loiter but must be servants who will serve instantly. Instantly. 
Scottish minister and hymn writer Horatius Bonar says this, God always uses the vessel that is nearest to him. Now if we think back to the story at the beginning of today's message about the young girl and her experience on Visitor's Day, what I did not tell you was that the girl decided to to return to the church, even though she was generally told off. And here's why she says in her words. She knew that God saw her heart, that God saw her hurts, her faults, her anger, her kindness. She knew that God sees it all. She knew that God loved her just as she is, not by the clothes that she wore. She wasn't mad at the woman who even judged her because even though she disagreed with her and saw her differently. And what the young girl did is love this woman back. God says to love our neighbors just as ourselves. And brothers and sisters, that's what this message is all about. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, sacrificing his son Jesus Christ on the cross for you and for me so that all of this ugliness is gone. You are beautiful in his eyes, perfect and forgiven. But does this not mean that everyone would be so gracious in returning to this church if we did not have an attitude that cares for those that we consider outsiders of this community. The very culture that we desire to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now listen to these words words from 1 Samuel 16 through 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance. appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. Now I'd like to share just momentarily a memory from my previous minister as a youth and associate pastor. I was banned from wearing shorts on Sunday morning by the leadership of the church. I was not allowed to wear flip-flops or sandals. And when I asked about this, what does this have to do with my heart for worship? Think of the back pew as a chariot and that someone that we do not know will eventually sit there. Think about when you are not at church and you're out and about in the community or the world. Find out where God is at work and join him there. In reading the story at just the right moment, the Lord brought Philip across the path of the Ethiopian. And Philip was God's laborer in the field. You never know when God will bring you across someone else's way at that right moment so that you can witness the love of Christ in the same way that Philip did. The solution to our attitude in joining what God is doing relies on the obedience to the voice of God's Spirit and to break through the impulse of common barriers that judge strangers based on where they live or how they dress. Everybody recognizes the name Billy Graham, and he once said, the evangelistic harvest is always urgent. And when it comes to accomplishing overwhelming tasks, attitude is everything. And finally, of course, none of us compare to Billy Graham, but as Dr. Graham also said, God will hold us responsible as to how well we fulfill our responsibilities. There is an attitude of sensitivity to God's leading, and if we walk with God long enough, we will be mature enough to trust in God's instructions. As we embrace 
who's leaving on a new journey and mission trip. We must embrace the Holy Spirit both with them and us here and be available to hear God's word. And it doesn't do much good if we're not willing to follow it. We may not meet a very high-ranking and wealthy official like the Ethiopian eunuch, but there will come a time when we encounter a traveler serious about the finding the answers about God. If we stop and think about the impact of witnessing our faith to a single person, the attitude that we embrace captures the outstretched arms of God.